Hello there, my fellow mysteriously acquired battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Last week we got started on probably the most joked about chapter in the entirety of 40k, aka the Blood Ravens. We talked a little bit about them and a couple of their early campaigns. Today we will continue covering them in a non-meme fashion and talk about their organization and librarians. I am also aware I said I would intermingle another chapter's lore between these videos, because the Blood Ravens will probably take about 5 or 6 episodes. That intermingling will very likely happen next time. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Blood Ravens identify themselves as a chapter that stays closely within the criteria demanded by the Codex Astartes. By the standards of someone who has little interaction with actual Space Marines, this is a reasonably accurate description. However, compared to many of the more conservative chapters, particularly the likes of the Ultramarines and the Imperial Fists and their successors, the Blood Ravens exhibit a significant level of variation from the standard procedures dictated by the Codex. The Blood Ravens' basic company organization is consistent with the directives of the Codex. They do maintain 10 standard companies. Each of these companies maintains the status, combat specializations, and training protocols dictated by the Codex. This is in spite of the fact that the chapter is fleet-based so companies may be forced to separate due to extended engagements aboard vessels directed to different parts of the Imperium. The most sweeping change with the Librarian's company leadership is that all the company commanders take a member of the Librarius as a trusted advisor, who also aids them in preparation for battle. In some instances, these Librarians even go on to assume the title of company commander in the event of battlefield losses. The Blood Ravens is known for having a much higher number of librarians than many other chapters. It is not uncommon for multiple librarians to be attached to a single company. Librarians to be in charge of outposts and starships, and even whole companies when necessary. Such as Librarian Captain Lucius, the former captain of the 5th company. The 1st company of the Blood Ravens also includes several squads made up entirely of librarians which are dispatched only on the most important missions, though what these may be is not always known. The Chapter Master of the Blood Ravens also traditionally holds the dual role of Chapter Master and Chief Librarian, a tradition dating back to when the Great Father Azariah Vidya was the first one to do so. Whatever the reasons for such a large number of librarians in the ranks of the Blood Ravens, they are still an integral part of the chapter. For example, the Ninth Company had no less than four librarians attached to it, though with the recent deaths of brothers Beryl and Rama, that number dropped to two. Other librarians of note in the chapter are Isidore Akios, the former librarian of the Third Company before he turned traitor, Father Jonas, who was previously stationed on the chapter's recruiting world of Rahe's Paradise, and the two other Ninth Company librarians, Zafel and Corinth. After the Third Aurelian Crusade and the death of the corrupted Azariah Kairos, Captain Gabriel Angelos ascended to become the new Chapter Master of the Blood Ravens after a bloody purge. Under his leadership, many of the chapter's unusual practices continue to be re-examined. Since the ascension of Gabriel Angelos, the Blood Ravens have become intensely focused on the identification and elimination of the traitor legions and those allied with the warp. In multiple instances, Imperial pleas for assistance with other threats have gone unanswered, so that the Blood Ravens could continue to focus on their own agenda against chaos. It is too early to tell if this is a long-term change in the chapter's outlook, or simply a shorter-term strategy necessitated by extraordinary circumstances. As a fleet-based chapter, the Blood Ravens recruit from many different worlds, and recruitment, training, and implantation of gene seed organs in aspirants can be done by nearly every capital ship in the Blood Raven's fleet. The reserve of the chapter's gene seed is spread throughout all the primary starships, 
stored in the implantation chambers aboard each vessel. These chambers are the most protected on any Blood Raven starship, and will be defended by the Blood Ravens with their lives if necessary, for these chambers contain the very future of the chapter. The Blood Ravens is based out of the battle barge Omnis Arcanum, that also serves as the Mobile Fortress Monastery. It is from the Omnis Arcanum that the Blood Ravens chapter master directs all the efforts of the chapter's companies. Like many Astartes chapters, the Blood Ravens maintain an honor guard for the chapter master. The honor guard under Azariah Kairos was led by Captain Apollo Diomedes, the physical embodiment of the chapter master's will. The Blood Ravens have suffered heavy losses in recent times, during the likes of the Tartarus Campaign, the Dark Crusade, the Kaurava Campaign, the first two Aurelian Crusades, and the Inquisition's recent purge of the Aurelian subsector, all of which have led to a loss of a number of the chapter's recruiting worlds. It will take a long time to rebuild the chapter's numbers from such losses. And with every recruiting world which has been ravaged, the Blood Ravens' future prospects become even more dark. A secret unit from within the chapter is known as the Ordo Psychana, also known as the Secret Order of Psychana. This is an elite body within the chapter consisting of the most powerful chapter librarians and entire units of servitors. Their role is to embark upon missions to recover archaeotech, ancient relics of the chapter, and other lost human knowledge. The librarians of the chapter also fulfill a number of more secretive and specialized roles, including stewardship of the Great Librarium of the Omnis Arcanum and the secret orders of Psychiana maintaining the Sanctorium Arcanum aboard the battle barge Litany of Fury. The chapter's Librarium Sanctorum contains many scrolls, tomes, and computational engines storing the chapter's records, their roles of honor, and the ancient lore they have recovered during their ongoing research. Blood Raven's librarians also have a certain number of unique psychic abilities, only used by the psychers of this chapter. Battle Sight The librarians can pierce the fog of war with only a thought casting their mind far and wide across a battlefield, a world, or even the entire star system, for hints and clues to the movements of their enemies that may have gone unnoticed by more conventional detection means. A librarian may use this psychic power in two different ways, choosing its application before he manifests it. The first application is to gain an immediate tactical edge in combat, and it is most useful when facing immediate battlefield threats. Used in this way, Battle Sight reveals the position of all the enemies within range that have hostile intentions towards the Librarian. This doesn't track the movement of the enemy or their actions, but simply informs the Librarian of their presence, direction, and distance from his current location. In addition to revealing the foe, this power allows the Librarian to see through cover and concealment when making attacks against enemies revealed by Battle Sight. The second use of the power is to gain a broad strategic overview of the area, and information on how to better complete a mission or overcome a foe. Truth Seeker Blood Raven's librarians spend much of their lives seeking knowledge and looking into the origins of their chapter by sifting through the secrets of the past. The Truth Seeker ability allows a librarian to find details and clues that he might have otherwise omitted drawing his attention to objects and areas of interest. Warp Whispers The librarian can listen to the babblings of the warp and perceive the secrets of its denizens, sifting through the noise and maddening chatter to find grains of truth. It is a practice not without peril, however, and many librarians don't even dare attempt such a folly though those of the Blood Ravens know that true knowledge can never be gained without a degree of danger. The Blood Ravens also have an interesting relationship with the Inquisition. Their librarians can be found in the Death Watch, and the chapter also appears to maintain an unusually close relationship with the Grey Knights. It would appear that the Grey Knights, all of them psychers, have an affinity for the Blood Ravens, and they trust the chapter with the knowledge of their existence, for some reason. 
the Grey Knights attached a task force to assist the Blood Ravens during the Dark Crusade on the world of Cronus for reasons unknown. It is interesting to note that the Grey Knights worked closely with the Blood Ravens, but not with the other Imperial forces on the planet. And indeed, the Blood Ravens came into conflict at a time with the forces of the Imperial Guard. Due to the unflinching and conflicting orders of Governor Militant Lucas Alexander and Captain Davian Thule. It should be noted that following the first two Aurelian Crusades, the Blood Ravens' home subsector of Aurelia came under an increasingly powerful assault by the forces of Chaos and a splinter of the Tyranid High Fleet Leviathan. With increasing evidence that large portions of the Blood Ravens had been corrupted by Chaos, the Ordo Hereticus commandeered several regiments of the Imperial Guard. They were put under the command of the Inquisitor Adrastia and sought to launch an exterminatus campaign against all the worlds of the Aurelian subsector. As a result of the heroics of Captain Gabriel Angelos and those Blood Ravens who stayed loyal to the Emperor, the taint of chaos upon the chapter was purged and much of the subsector was saved from destruction. However, a deep and lingering suspicion still remains between the Blood Ravens and the Ordo Hereticus. Obviously, the Inquisitors will continue to cast a wary eye upon the Blood Ravens and their new chapter master, Gabriel Angelos, for a long time to come. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Blood Ravens, their organization and librarians for today. What do you think of the way these fellows are organized? The numbers of librarians present in the chapter and their company organization would indeed seem to buy into the theory that they are secret Thousand Sun successors. Feel free to share any thoughts and opinions on the matter in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects